No matter the season, but definitely something to be aware of for all orchid growers in fall, winter, and early spring, depending on your temperatures. Windows are closed more often than not. Fresh air is limited as we try to keep our homes and orchids warm enough. So this video will expose the invisible and sometimes odorless dangers that permeate our spaces, which could be detrimental to our orchids. Even with our orchids, prevention is better than cure, and with this video, I hope to be able to create awareness of the lurking threats. Invisible, and in some cases odorless, yep, household gases such as carbon monoxide, ethylene, and formaldehyde are the culprits behind any mysterious death of our precious orchids. These invisible destroyers of orchids seep into our homes through everyday items like gas stoves, heating systems, and even certain types of furniture, believe it or not. I'm glad that you're here because this video will arm you with the insights, you will get x-ray vision of your surroundings, and the understanding which household items emit these gases and how to properly ventilate your home, reducing the threat to your orchids. And if you cannot ventilate as much as you would like to because of your conditions, at least with the information provided, you may be able to make some kind of adjustments so that your orchids will be able to ride out the colder temperatures while being nice and snug indoors together with you. Thank you so much for being here. Now, would you please take a moment to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this as well as others that are a little less serious? because having fun growing orchids is the biggest focus on this channel. However, in order to have fun long-term with our orchids, we need videos like this one specifically to keep them safe. Sharing a video like this is also very much appreciated because I don't think this is a danger that is taken into consideration enough, seeing as, again, invisible and odorless in some cases. It's like you've got Casper around your home, around your orchids, but this Casper is not the friendly ghost. So I thank you very much for supporting the channel as I turn your attention to the dangerous gases that may be lurking in your home and what action you can take to protect your orchids. Let's start with the gas that is most common and that is ethylene gas. Ethylene gas is a plant hormone which is naturally produced by fruit, flowers, and other plant parts as they ripen. Exposure to high levels of ethylene gas can cause your orchid blooms and buds to drop prematurely, as well as cause yellowing of leaves. Sources of ethylene gas in households include ripening fruit, maybe you have some orchids in your kitchen next to a fresh fruit basket display, aging blooms, maybe someone was amazing to you and brought you a bunch of flowers and you have orchids close by, as well as faulty gas appliances. Now that is a danger to your health as well, but any faulty gas appliance may have leaks from which ethylene gas is escaping in minute amounts, but enough to affect orchids. And then we have carbon monoxide, which is a colorless, flavorless, and odorless gas that is created when fuels like natural gas, propane, and petroleum are burnt. Orchids are susceptible to wilting, yellowing, and ultimately suffocating when exposed to high concentrations of carbon monoxide. Gas-powered devices and generators are some home sources of carbon monoxide. Now, automobiles as well. Of course, we don't have our automobile start up within the home, but in the garage, maybe, before you open the garage door and you possibly have winter resters in there that need that winter cool down as part of their resting phase, be very careful if you have those in your garage because, yeah, the minute you power up your engine, you are starting to suffocate your orchids. So just a little side note on the carbon monoxide threat in a garage should you be having orchids stored there as winter resters. And I personally have lost orchids to the exposure of a single propane heater where I thought it was far enough away from the orchids, it was just warming my feet. Well, no, it was clearly not far away. Some orchids of mine suffocated and went on their way, while others, it took quite some time to rehabilitate them. So another gas we have, <laughs> which is a colorless gas, but it has a pungent smell that is formaldehyde, and that is commonly found in household products such as pressed wood products, plywood, and some types of insulation. Exposure to formaldehyde can cause orchid leaves to turn yellow and fall off, and it can also damage flowers and buds. So be careful with what you're doing in your home. 
if you're redoing your orchid grow space because it's winter it's as good as time as any and you're shuffling them around repainting etc putting in more separation walls or shelving walls careful with what products you are using and check the label to ensure that there is no formaldehyde in those products Chlorine gas is a yellow-green gas with a strong pungent odor that is commonly used in household cleaning products, including swimming pools and hot tubs. Exposure to high levels of chlorine gas can cause orchid leaves to turn yellow and drop off, and it can also damage flowers and buds. So if you have any kind of installation within your home that is a heated swimming pool or just a nice little sunroom that has a hot tub in it and you've pimped it up with beautiful tropical foliage and orchids, if you're using chlorine for that wonderful installation, you might want to be very, very vigilant as to how your orchids are responding. Ammonia is a colorless gas with a strong pungent odor that is commonly found in cleaning products. Exposure to high levels of ammonia can cause orchid leaves to curl, turn yellow, and eventually die. As mentioned, what you want to look out for, for the sources of ammonia within your household, that would include checking your cleaning products, all your cat moms and dads out there. Cat litter boxes are also a source where high ammonia gases are emitted, as well as other animal cages. Know that even if your pet doesn't chew on your orchids, the fact that they are living within your space with that kind of an infrastructure, hmm, the gases can be detrimental. Even though we may not appreciate them because we're keeping our pets clean and tidy, there's nothing wrong with being extra vigilant when it comes to our orchids inside. Sulfur dioxide is a colorless gas with a pungent odor. Thankfully, at least we can recognize that. And that is produced by burning fuels such as coal and oil. Exposure to high levels of sulfur dioxide can cause orchid leaves to yellow and brown, and it can also damage flowers and buds. The sources of sulfur dioxide in households include gas appliances and heating systems. Ozone is a colorless gas with a strong odor that is produced by electrical equipment such as photocopiers, air purifiers, and ozone generators. So exposure to high levels of ozone can cause orchid leaves to turn brown and brittle, and it can also damage flowers and buds. Love your orchids in your workspace. Careful what you've got around them, and if they're not doing well, you may assume that has something to do with low light levels. Hmm, probably not. If you've got orchids close to a photocopier, you might just want to consider moving them further away from what is a very much needed appliance for an office, but it is offensive to our orchids. <laughs> In general, though, to protect your orchids from these harmful household gases, it is important to keep them away from sources of gas and ensure good air circulation in your home. Especially during the winter when we're not just sporadically opening the windows wide, you can also use air purifiers with HEPA filters to reduce the levels of harmful gases in your home. And to eliminate risk entirely because you never know, it's important to avoid using chemical cleaning products near your orchids and to use natural alternatives instead. Pointing out what could be obvious, but you know, I'm gonna add it anyway, just in case you are into the DIYs within your space. Volatile organic compounds, or VOCs, are gases that are released from many household products such as paints, solvents, adhesives, and cleaning products. Exposure to high levels of VOCs can cause orchid leaves to turn yellow and brown, and it can also damage flowers and buds. To reduce the levels of VOCs in your home, consider using low VOC products or natural alternatives. At least we can see this gas if it is in high concentration. It's nitrogen dioxide, which is reddish brown in color with a pungent odor, thankfully. At least we can see that and smell it. And that is produced by gas stoves, heaters, and cars. Once again, watch out for you who have orchids in garages. Exposure to high levels of nitrogen dioxide can cause orchid leaves to turn yellow and brown, and it can also damage flowers and buds. To reduce the levels of nitrogen dioxide in your home, make sure your gas appliances are properly maintained and ventilate your home as best as possible, even while it's cold. I know, that's a tough one, but you're probably noticing a common thread here with what is going on with all these gases and how they can be in our homes while we're hunkered down trying to stay warm. 
All right, here we have another threat coming up. For this list of gases, this is my last one. It is methane, it's a threat, it really is, because you can't see it, you can't smell it. It is a gas which is produced by the decay of organic matter and the burning of fossil fuels. Exposure to high levels of methane can cause orchid leaves to turn yellow and brown, and it can also damage flowers and buds. Sources of methane in households also include gas appliances. So all this sounds really scary, right? I hope I haven't got you looking left and right going, um... <laughs> We're trying to fight an invisible enemy, but here are a few pointers as to what you can do to save your orchids and yourself from these gases doing any damage to them or even to you. It's not like I'm just going to leave you with, here's the threat, get on with it. No, I'm going to bring you some solutions, some pointers. First of all, the most obvious is provide good ventilation. <clears throat> Yeah, not when it is freezing cold outside, but try. Make sure your orchids are in a well-ventilated area and open windows and doors to allow fresh air to circulate. This will help to reduce the concentration of harmful gases in the air. And while that is difficult during the winter, this is one of the quickest and bestest, if that is a word, way to eliminate the threat while you've got these appliances going in your home and possibly the furniture as well. Remember, we have formaldehyde in some furniture lacquers and cleaners with their aerosol sprays while we're getting the dust off our wooden furniture. Ooh, all these things are around us and our orchids. Also, you can choose natural alternatives to chemical cleaning products, air fresheners and fertilizers to reduce the amount of harmful gases in your home. I do not have a natural fertilizer, but I have my chemical fertilizer stashed far away from my orchids in another room entirely. Sometimes we have a growth space in which we have everything beautifully organized because it's convenient. And if that is the case in your space, keep the container well sealed, which will also be much better for the product, not just for the orchids. Consider using air purifiers with HEPA filters if your space has some of the sources for these gases mentioned and you cannot open windows because the temperature drop in your space would also harm your orchids. If your orchids are not taking up all the space in your home, <laughs> you can also incorporate other plants that remove air pollutants including gases from your home. Some great examples are the spider plants, which are excellent at removing formaldehyde, benzene, carbon monoxide, and silene from the air. Aloe vera not only looks great in any space, but it also removes formaldehyde and benzene from the air. English ivy is great for removing benzene, formaldehyde, and trichloroethylene from the air. Beautiful plants that are also low maintenance are peace lilies. Peace lilies effectively remove harmful gases like formaldehyde benzene as well as trichloroethylene from the air. How about bamboo? I love bamboo, but I don't have any space for it. But still, the bamboo palm is a great plant for removing formaldehyde benzene and carbon monoxide from the air. So you can see how the common denominator for many of the gases mentioned are heating appliances as well as furniture, cleaning products. And all of that can accumulate in the indoor space when we are not just opening windows wide. While during the warmer months of the year, we have our windows and doors wide open, the airflow is constant and fresh air is circulated, making these gases dissipate. Also, we don't have our heaters on and nothing really affects our orchids. But during the winter, we hunker down and concentration of the gases increases. So just be mindful about your surroundings and those of your orchids. As mentioned earlier, I have lost orchids because one year I opted for a gas heater while I was working at my desk. My orchids are concentrated in the space behind me during the winter and well, I had to say goodbye to them within a short period of time. I learned my lesson. <laughs> no heating for me during the winter. <laughs> I shall ride out the cold together with my orchids in solidarity. <laughs> at least I've got one threat eliminated in doing that. Not that there aren't others, but when it comes to gases, and threats like that. <laughs> At least I have a clear conscience. <laughs> You also heard that there was a repeat about the symptoms of what these gases do to our orcas. 
bud blast, flower drop, yellowing leaves, leaf drop, shriveling of leaves, all of that. What these harmful gases do to our orchids is they take the gases in through their stomata, which get destroyed, causing the orchid to suffocate. I would say in layman's terms, the orchids affected by the gases, they actually can't breathe anymore. And even sometimes once we recognize what is going on, it can be too late. So I hope that this video didn't come too late for you either you are now well equipped and it's not going to happen to you or you have got the answer as to what happened to your orchids despite your care being absolutely the same winter in winter out and yet sometimes you lose orchids so i hope this video answered some questions and also equipped you with information that you can work with as some of us move into the colder months of the year let me know if you have any questions i'd be happy to help with specific examples you may have for your space and if there is a lurking danger or not. Thank you so, so much for watching. I appreciate your time. I also wish you a beautiful day, but I attach a condition to that, that you stay safe. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video you choose to watch. Take care. Bye.